Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about cytopathic effects. So first, what are cytopathic effects? Well, they are observable cell abnormalities. So basically ways in which the cells become abnormal that we can observe. Sometimes you need um, like a high powered microscope and special stains to observe certain uh, cytopathic effects. Sometimes you can see them on a low powered microscope. It just depends on um, what kind of um, cytopathic effect you're looking for and in what kind of cell type. But so these are actually caused by viral infections. And sometimes cytopathic effects are called CPEs. So let's talk about a few different types. Now, different viruses infecting different cell types will cause different kinds of cytopathic effects. But some of the ones that doctors will be looking for is a change in cellular shape. Um, especially cells that should be flat, becoming more rounded. Also a loss of surface adherence. So this is when cells usually, like they like to grow attached to some kind of substrate, some kind of surface. And um, if they've been infected by a virus that has um, basically messed these cells up, they'll stop adhering to a surface and just start sort of floating in the, um, in the, the, the medium. There's also shrinking of the nucleus, so the nucleus getting smaller. Um, another one that they will look for is inclusion bodies. So you may, might never have heard of this before, but inclusion bodies are basically just aggregates of protein that can collect in the nucleus or in the cytoplasm, basically wherever the virus is dividing. Um, so the, the site of viral replication, you'll see these aggregates of protein, and that's what we call inclusion bodies. Another type of CPE is the formation of multinucleated syncytia. So syncytia are when you have multiple cells fused together. So that you have one large, um, sort of overly large structure that has a lot of different nuclei in it that came from a lot of individual cells that have fused together. Another possible CPE is disruption of host cell chromatin. So when the host cell's DNA uh, becomes disrupted um, and, and sort of disorganized. That's a type of CPE. Another one is cell lysis. Remember that lysis simply means to burst open, to sort of burst open or burst apart. So cell lysis is when a cell breaks open um, and this is cell death. The, the cell dies when it undergoes lysis. Another type of CPE um, probably the worst kind is transformation of the host cell into an immortal cell. Immortal cells are another name for cancer. So basically this is um, characterized by something called loss of senescence. Senescence, senescence is the ability to stop dividing and we obviously want our cells to not divide uncontrollably but when and, and that's called senescence but when cells lose senescence they can no longer stop dividing they just start dividing 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 out of control um, we call them immortal cells and this is what leads to um, cancerous tumors now let's talk about some examples of doctors using cytopathic effects as a diagnostic tool. A really common one that you've probably heard of is a pap smear. So once young women reach a certain age, it's recommended that they get a pap smear every year. And this is where a doctor um, collects a sample from, um, from, the, from the woman's cervix, so to get cervical cells. And those cervical cells are actually viewed under a microscope and assessed for different kinds of CPEs. And they're specifically looking for the CPEs that are caused by HPV infection, human papillomavirus, um, especially those that would be indicative of cancer because HPV is certainly well known for causing cervical cancer. So pap smears are looking for these CPEs in order to diagnose that. 
Uh, another way that CPEs can be used diagnostically is with a hepatitis C infection. A hepatitis C infection can often be diagnosed based on something called liver steatosis. This is basically the abnormal retention of lipids in a cell. Um, so that's one of these uh, observable cell abnormalities that can be um, linked back to a hepatitis C infection. If you're interested in learning more about viruses, check out my video on introduction to viruses where you can learn about viral replication, viral genomes, different kinds of shapes and structures. Uh, and that is all for today. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.